me? What is that? Okay. All right. So, a, a while ago, during during the, I mean, you guys have learned about Vietnam and the protests and you know the way that the, the, the country was reacting to this war that was going on. Uh, this guy named Norman Morrison pro wanted, wanted to show, wanted to protest Vietnam. He was upset of he, he, about the, the loss of life. Um, he, he thought it was a war we shouldn't be involved with, uh, involved in. And it, it wasn't like this guy was a crazy guy. This was an educated guy, and everyone's like, I can't believe he did what he did. What he did was protest the war in Washington. He lights himself on fire, douses himself with gasoline, lights himself on fire. Now. Maybe okay. even worse, he had his kid, he had his kid with him, and luckily, luckily, someone was able to save the child. I mean, he was he wasn't saved. He, he was obviously Wait, he died. He died. Okay. Yeah, he did die. Um, but anyways, well, anyways, let's we're going to read this article together, and then I'm going to have you guys get together and take a look at the poem. But there's a article I want us to take a look at. Press a Time Magazine article. All right, um, let's just we'll just split it up. Let's have who wants to read the? Have someone read the first paragraph. And someone read the second. I'll, I'll go first. Matthew, Young Will. We don't do it at the same time. No, well, yeah. You read the first one. You read the second one. Okay. At 5:15 one afternoon last week, Norman Morrison, 31. His clothing doused in kerosene. Uh, it's not gas. It's kerosene. Yeah. Okay. Kerosene. I think kerosene is different. It's, it's, it's a little bit. It's, 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 it's like a lamb. It lamb oil. Yeah, wait, let's wait till he breathes a bit. Okay. Doused in, doused in kerosene, and his youngest child, 18-month-old Emily, cradled in his arms, stood outside the river entrance to the Pentagon and burned himself to death. As hundreds of departing officers and civilian workers watched, no photographers, no photographers were on the scene. Army Major Richard Lundquist, Army Major Richard Lundquist grabbed the child away from the flames. Army Lieutenant Colonel Charles Johnson, who had seen two Buddhists incinerate themselves on the street of Saigon, and two Air Force sergeants tried to smother the flames with coats and jackets. By the time an ambulance arrived, 70% of Morrison's body was burned. He was declared dead on arrival at Fort Myers Army Dispensary. Morrison's self-immolation, which means setting himself on fire, often as a form of protest for the purposes of Mardi Gras. His wife, Anne, <coughs> explained, expressed his concern over the great loss of life and human suffering caused by the war in Vietnam. He was put what? He was protesting. He was protesting the government's deep military involvement in this war. The suicide ended a life centered on religion since boyhood. Morrison was born near PA. When he was 13, his, his widow mother moved the family to Chautauqua, New York, where he became the first youth in the country to win the Boy Scout of God and Country Award. He was raised Presbyterian. Gradually became interested in the Quaker beliefs, particularly pacifism. While a student at Worcester College, or while a student at Worcester College, he later studied at a Presbyterian seminary in Pittsburgh and at the University of Edinburgh, and joined the Society of Friends in 1959. Since 1962, he was an executive secretary of the Stony Run Friends Meeting in Baltimore. Recent months, Morrison has, deeply, has been deeply disturbed about the U.S. bombing in Vietnam. Although colleagues detect no on-site uh, outside sign of psychosis, they might expect that. All right, excellent. This, go ahead, Matthew. What is this? Do they have Vietnam like separated? So because they want you to say Vietnam. 
I, I, we I, spelled it like if you look it up, it's a Vietnam. Like I'm not. I'm not sure why it's like that. It could even be a typo. You know, I don't know. Well, I've, never, twice. I've never. I've never seen it. Twice. Well, they did it twice. I've never Vietnam. seen it that way before. Vietnam. Um. So this is a guy that. This was some extreme form of protest. You want to talk about someone who did something shocking to prove a point, that's it. And this was a guy that you probably listened to his past. Sounds pretty normal to me. Um, this is what I want you and a partner to do today. This, uh, this, uh, this incident sparked a lot of, a lot of, well, this event, him doing this, sparked a lot of artwork and poetry. And um, so we have two poems. I actually, you know what? I put the poems on the bottom one, because the bottom one's the Google Doc. Um, basically, what you're going to be doing with your partner is you're going to be doing a text marking activity. All right? We've, we've done this before, like Beowulf and stuff like that, except you're just doing it with a poem. All right? Um, throughout the margin of your poem, all right, if there is a line or a section that you don't understand, you're going to put a question mark next to it, all right? If there is something you think is really important to the meaning of the poem, if you think there's something that brings up an excellent point, could be a, 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 maybe it's even a fantastic literary device, you want to highlight it. If there are important people or important characters that are, that these little facts are important, you want to highlight those two as well. Now, the thing is, this, thanks. Where's Ashley at? <laughs> Man, this is the third quarter. What this what you want to do though, because this these directions are going to say put a squiggly line under this and put a triangle next to that. You're doing it in a doc, which is what you're probably going to be doing a lot of reading. You know, come up with your own. All right, uh, it's for you anyway. So highlight a good point with your own color. All right, put your own symbol. Put your own method of quotes, okay, in the margins, all right? Um, so don't worry about that. Well, where's the triangle, you know, or I don't have a squiggly. No, 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 because you're not going to do it on paper, you're going to do it on a doc, all right? Use something that you guys want to know, and use that as a technique when you get older, too. If you're reading something that's on the doc, you know? I mean, have like, when I do your papers, like red means, when I highlight something red, it's like grammar mistake, you know, like oranges. You know, clarity and you know, blue is great and green is green. Green's okay. What? Green's like it's just it's good. I feel like green. Blue is like green. 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 all right. Now you can do one, do one per partner. Do one per partner. So you might want to divide it up, take each one person take the one poem and the other person take the other one. You might want to divide it up that way. That might be a good way to do it. All right. Then when you're done, this part you're really gonna love. Yes. A web quest. Yes. Web quest. I want you to go, and it's on the last last sheet. This is such a throwback. You are going to go. I want you to find a couple articles, a couple opinion stories, preferably from that time period. Preferably from that time period, talking about. It this event, talking about this event and what happened, newspaper articles, a journal, um, an eyewitness account, um, a news story, maybe you can even find a video, what do I know? I mean, maybe an old video or something. Yeah. You're talking about the guy burning himself. Right, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Vietnam and color. All right, and there's just a couple questions, so I would divide that up, I'd make that easy too, so your partner's gonna be like, I'll, I'll find two, and then you could be like, I'll find another two, I got four. And now you're going to write on two of them, like, oh, those two are awesome. Let's write on those. You take one. So just split it up, you know, get her done. All right? Look at you split. Yeah, let's have some fun. Let's do it. Err. Err. 
Er. 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 Great imagery, 
something that stands out, maybe like symbolism, put a question mark into something we don't understand. Although the poems are pretty easy, I think we should, but you know. Yeah, just highlight something like that. Say, tell your buddy, hey, I'm going to highlight these really great imagery or really great lines in blue that I think do an awesome job. Um, and I'm going to put a question mark next to something I don't understand. Um, you know what I mean? No, I, I did that.
Do you like do you like Eric Church? Because he's kind of like rock or something. They're all kind of rock. I I, I don't hate it. Yeah. I, don't I think Eric Church is good. He's not, what about that song? I think it's my tractor sexy. You should do that. I want to
solo, you only have to do two. So, but it only you write on one. All right, so since you're working by yourself, you write on one of them. So maybe about four or five sentences. What is, you know, what is the author's view of this event? Uh, do they have an opinion on it? What's their opinion? Um, how do you think what is it? Have you wrote it? You know what I mean? Like everyone's, everyone's article is going to be a little bit different. Now, hopefully you find more of an opinion than like editorial type, but it's not, it's fine.
thought you said we're raiding the Nuzmug right now. No, we're going over the past. What do you mean on the Nuzmug? We're, we're yeah. behind because... We're behind the Nuzmug. Oh, Mrs. Nuzmug. Brown. Mrs. Brown! Oh, Mrs. Mrs. Brown. Mrs. 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 It's because we spent that whole time on a It was Miss Barber and Renee. It was Mr. Barrett in that. <laughs> it was, it was the bear. Before you started on that, man, Mr. Sands came in. Whoa. <laughs> Mr. Sands is a real dude. You got the keys, yeah. huh? I'll tell you about Andrew. <laughs> we, did, we did that one. Yeah, we did that one. Yeah, we, did we do this one? Yeah, yeah. 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 we did that one. Ah, there, there we go. go. There we go. Is that Heck the yeah. Pump it up. Uh, Timothy does Kowski. Uh, uh, <laughs> so, you're probably, I know what you're asking. Ask yourself, what does, what does that mean? And what it means is this. Listen, this I'm gonna kind of tie it into one of the other ones I brought in. I, I, I think I told you, like, not just here, but you know, any any kind of respectable job that you have, if you, you go down and look at the applications, there's a ton of them. You can go down there right now, over 300 probably for English or math or whatever, right? I told you the first thing they do to to nail yeah. down the field is GPA. Boom, out, right? Well, you're going to have still a lot of people with applications that have awesome college GPAs. All right, now you got to narrow that down. All right, so what do you do then? The reason why I'm telling you this too is because I took, you know, I got a degree to be an administrator. I know this stuff too. What happens next? Well, you want to look at that person who does things related in their field outside of it, but relates. I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example. I'll give you two examples. I'll give you three examples. Oh, oh, you're oh, you're oh, all right. Our line is already five. Five. You get an example. When I was, um, when I was a young buck at Ohio State, I was doing observations at a school, and this was probably my sophomore year, junior year, and I needed to do something that was related to school just besides getting my classes and my grades. All right, these are the things that help. So I started an after-school program. These were poor city kids. These were, these were troubled kids. And I started a program after school, and we, we got donated. We got some Nintendos donated. Um, we took some field trips. You know what I did? I volunteered to do it. The got program got so big that the YMCA wanted to take it over and then it turned into a paid position. This program, 20 years later, is still going. Really? And the YMCA bought it and they started paying us. It was they, they turned it into their program. I had that as well there. on my resume. You know what else I did? I went out of my way, I took football coaching classes. I, there's that part of the curriculum for teaching. Went out of my way, paid some extra scratch. John Cooper, who was a coach at the time in the 90s of Ohio State, he taught the class semester to semester, right? I did acting, that kind of stuff. So they're like, oh my God, this kid did this. This kid can do the plays of the musicals here. Wow, this kid can do the football. He can coach if he wants, wow. Not only that, I did a 24-page research paper on kids that had difficulty writing. It was, a, it was a year and a half study. I presented it at New York University. Had my, what did I just do? I, pad, I pumped up my stats on my resume. These are the types of things that are going to set you apart from others. My buddies, both of them are engineers. One works at Intel and in Oregon. The other guy works at GM in Detroit. They did two volunteer internships. Two volunteer internships. And you're gonna have those people that are gonna tell you, don't do anything for free. I, I get it, listen. My day was classes, my volunteer program, and then I worked until 11 o'clock, and then I started studying. It stinks, it's a lot of work. If you can, if you can find a part-time little extra something that will help relate to what you're looking for and get paid for it, 
that is a gem, that is a nugget that above. you want to hold on to. You know what I'm saying? If you want to be an architect and you get like a small job at a firm, like even if it's just meeting people and, and shaking hands, and even if you're just delivering the mail, you know what I'm screaming? So you took that coaching class? Yeah. So you can coach track. Right. If you want to. Well, you're the new track coach? You know, I sold vinyl siding and windows door to door. I worked in those factories. Those would do nothing for my job application, nothing for my resume, all right? So you need those little extra things because you're gonna find out, hey, I got a 4.0. Well, guess what? So do 15 or 20 other people. So when you start putting, when you start padding your stats, pumping up your stats, putting more things on that resume, those are the things that are going to separate you from the others. I had a buddy who was an engineer too. He went to Kent, but he was he was. Uh, I'm not doing any free internship. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> it took him like six, seven extra years longer. He finally found a job. I'm telling you, where my, my other boys, you know, right out, right out of the gate. Yeah. So this program that you started at Ohio State, you mm -hmm. the YMCA Bowling. Sure. Mm -hmm. Do they credit you with that? Like, did they like, hey, you know, Mr. P founded this? Like, I have no idea. The teachers that I ran it with, when, when people started, when it got large, when it got so big that I had other teachers working, working it too. They've all retired. I know it's still there. I know it's still 